So uh, my name is Shakil. Uh, I work on Linux kernel memory management uh, for data centers for server side uh, at Google. And uh, yeah, I, I'm Suren. Uh, I work for Android team uh, at Google, also on manage, uh, memory management. <laughs> so today uh, we are going to talk about more uh, on uh, the core techniques and principles to improve the memory utilization without impacting the performance across different computing platforms from mobile devices to data centers. So first thing, uh, why do we need more DRAM? So let's talk about the mobile devices. So uh, the demand for the RAM for, by, uh, from the application is keep increasing, but there's a limit how much RAM we can put in the device, in our mobile device, due to uh, many factors, cost, size. And once the device is there, like you have built the device, the customer's the device, you cannot really retrofit the more RAM uh, into the device. In, on the other side, uh, on the other end of this computer platform for the data centers, it's mainly the, it's the cost. So DRAM cost is one of the major uh, factor of the whole data center cost. And usually uh, uh, the RAM is over, uh, over provisioned and underutilized. To improve, uh, to reduce this cost, you have to like increase uh, uh, the utilization without impacting performance. And for the data center, usually the RAM is you like more expensive, it's error correcting, like a couple of bytes, uh, bits per bytes are used uh, for reliability. So the current status, so whenever uh, currently in for the Android, uh, there is shortage of RAM. What current uh, Android does is uh, it start killing background applications the impact of uh, that particular operation is like once you uh, use a switch back to the application, the background application, it will be like kind of like restart from scratch. So it's a cold start, which is very like, which is slow and power hungry. So it will impact your, uh, uh, the battery and also the user experience as well. While, uh, in the, the on the other end for the data centers you usually overcommit the memory and when you overcommit the memory there's more chances you will hit the global memory pressure and when you hit global memory pressure you will go into directory claim and once you're in the directory claim there is no performance isolation between the jobs and there are so many different ways you things can go wrong in the directory claim in particularly in the Linux kernel there are so many different uh, heuristics and many different things can go wrong there. So you never, even like when you're over committing, uh, you're particularly for the server where you're running multiple uh, jobs, uh, bad jobs, latency sensitive jobs, you never want to go into the directory claim. And the second thing is like once uh, when you, are, you have reclaimed memory, and you, you refall those memory, it can be expensive uh, because uh, you can be uh, uh, faulting from slow storage devices. So these things can uh, like over commit can impact the system uh, by inducing global memory pressure and uh, triggering more refaults, which are costly. So, the solution we are looking at is basically like proactively, instead of like waiting for the whole system to go into the memory pressure, why not proactively reclaim memory? So here there are reclaimed unneeded memory, which is unneeded hopefully in the near future, and which is also very cheap to refold. So there are two points, unneeded memory and cheap to refold. So the way Android approach this uh, problem is, so Android has a very, like at the user space, good way to, which is 
like a, a front facing application and the background application very much clear cut there so android can say okay these are the background application why not just reclaim memory from them and cheap to default is why not instead of like uh, reclaiming the file pages or the pages which uh, you have to default from the slow storage why not use in memory compression which is very fast it's a couple of microseconds and android is currently using zram on the other end, uh, for the for the server side, we like in the server we don't really know uh, when you are running a lot of mix uh, workload, little sensitive job, bad jobs. We uh, we cannot uh, like Android. We cannot uh, differentiate at the job level. So we need more fine grained uh, mechanism to track which memory we should be reclaiming. And uh, we have a, uh, we'll go in more detail what we do, what we did uh, at Google. And at the moment, in, uh, we are using, we also use in-memory compression, but we use Zswap in the server. And this is, uh, is deployed across the Google Center at the moment. Okay. Uh, All right, so on Android side, <coughs> As Shekil said, uh, we are trying to uh, avoid cold starts, which is a restart from scratch. Uh, and to do that, we need to make sure that we can keep more background applications alive uh, while not impacting the interactive ones. So the idea is how can we shrink the background ones which our user doesn't interact, uh, interact right now. Um, so uh, what's wrong with this picture? And that's what we saw is this big orange size, is the size of this big orange uh, section, which represents uh, cached applications or background applications. So what we see is the biggest uh, hogger of the memory are the background applications, which is understandable. There are many more background applications than foreground applications. <coughs> so basically our goal is to reclaim this memory, uh, which is mostly idle. Um, and uh, what kind of heuristics we can come up with to do that. And uh, at the last end, the rightmost end uh, of this picture is when uh, memory claim happened and finally reclaimed that memory. So how can we do that proactively so that we don't get the system into kind of a bad situation before this memory gets reclaimed? So uh, the idea is because in Android we have clear cut, distinct, uh, we can distinguish uh, uh, foreground and background applications. Um, and our data analysis shows that if application went into the background and stayed there for at least 10, 15 seconds, there's a good, it's a good indication that it's not gonna be reused anytime soon. Uh, what we can do is basically reclaim the memory from it as soon as that state happened, so it went into background, sat there for 15 seconds, let's say. So uh, we can tell, we can hint the kernel that uh, this application is not going to be used anytime soon. Go ahead and uh, reclaim some of the, uh, some of the easily, uh, um, some of the memory which is easily paged in later on. Um, so the only thing we are missing is mechanisms to do that. So we are working on implementing a new syscall called process M advice. And it also includes two additional uh, advi M advice options, which is M advice code and M advice page out. M advice code uh, deactivates the pages. So basically it moves um, pages from active LRU into head of the inactive LRU, uh, which speeds up the reclaim of those pages. And M advice page out uh, immediately reclaims those pages. Um, and I'll explain why we have two di different options. Um, those two uh, M advice options are already in the MM tree. They are merged there, so hopefully we will see them pretty soon upstream. And process M advice is still under development. And uh, as a result, uh, when we run our tests, we get about 15% uh, less kills from dog, dog food population, basically on some limited um, um, set of users, and uh, up to 30% less kills when we are running our stress tests. 
which are synthetic stress tests. Um, so why did we come up with those two different options? Because uh, when we started experimenting with this, we uh, first we decided, okay, let's reclaim all the pages, um, which are reclaimed uh, in a non-destructive way. Because Amadwise has already options to uh, like do not, do, do not need and free, which reclaims them, but it basically s uh, hints the kernel that this page, uh, this pages, you know, we don't need them. Period. So they can be dropped. In our case, we want to tell the kernel, these pages are not needed right now. They don't destroy the data in them, but you can reclaim the memory in a non-destructive way. Uh, so the first experiment was let's reclaim non-destructively all the pages of the background applications and we s what we saw was uh, uh, regressions. So we saw regressions on some specific uh, tests and um, after analyzing the results we uh, realized that reclaiming fileback pages which basically uh, clear, clear pages, dropping them in, then paging them out, uh, paging them in, uh, back in is uh, too costly. Um, so uh, what can we do to improve that is we decided, okay, instead of reclaiming them, let's deactivate them. That basically speeds up the reclaim in the future when uh, memory pressure rises uh, without the need to page them in if they are reused uh, sometime soon. And that was the second experiment uh, where we saw mostly uh, improvements, but in one case there was a regression, and after analyzing that, we re decided that the re uh, we found out that the reason for the uh, regression is the timing of this uh, uh, those deactivations on reclaim. So, when the system is already under pressure, you don't want to do the ap application comp compaction like that, because you are creating graces between uh, case swap D or direct reclaim with. Um, with your uh, processes which try to compact the application. So by timing uh, the application compaction at the right moment when there is no memory pressure, we got rid of this uh, regression also. Uh, so in the end, we got those numbers, 15% uh, less uh, kills in the field and 30% less kills on the running, str uh, running the stress tests. Uh, some of the examples like a uh, popular game can be compressed from 1.7 uh, gigabytes in background into 700 mega megabytes when it's compacted into ZRAM, which is pretty good um, uh, decrease in size. We don't see a noticeable penalty on warm starts. Warm starts is basically when we need to decompress this into memory back. Uh, and that's because we're using ZRAM, which is um, in, in RAM compression basically, so it's much faster than paging, uh, paging in uh, the application um, from scratch. And we do see uh, a number of calls start dropping because we kill less. Um, so back to the implementation, um, we have those two hints and I explained why we, we have them separate, not just one. Um, uh, state, yeah. So, uh, process M advice is still under development because of the one um, issue we hit, and that will be one of the uh, discussion points later on in this presentation. But other than that, uh, new M advice options are already in the MM tree, so expect them soon. Um, and process M advice, what process M advice is do does is basically the same thing as M advice, but you, it can operate on the VMAs of a different process. So that's done so that um, system management software can hint kernel about some other processes uh, memory um, that it can be shrunk. Um, let's see. Oh, thank you. Uh, so now coming back to the factory flame for the event center. So here, uh, as I mentioned before, it's not like uh, Android, you know about the background or foreground application. There are a lot of uh, latency sensitive jobs and uh, bad jobs of different priorities running on the server. So we have a more fine-grained mechanism to find the memory which we should be reclaiming. 
So even before going uh, uh, in the final uh, those details, let me j just first give you the high level how uh, at Google we do the memory over commit. So it's the high level, it's basically we replace the part of DRAM with the cheap slow memory or far memory. So how we provision uh, memory is like someone requests for X amount of memory, which basically translates to some uh, like part of is DRAM and the part is a cheap slow memory. And it's uh, this model is generic enough uh, that the cheap slow memory can is completely transparent to the user. And the examples are Zswap is one example. It can be any other PMEM or, or remote swap or stuff. And uh, the size of this cheap solo memory corresponds to the our estimation of how much idle memory these jobs have. And this is the uh, this uh, graph we also have in our paper in the S plus. So basically this tells us uh, how much opportunity do we have uh, across the Google data centers. This is uh, data for multi-tenant uh, data center. Uh, what it tells you, uh, let's, if we define an idle memory, uh, the x-axis is basically how we are defining the idle memory. If the idle memory is uh, two minutes, uh, a page is not accessed for the last two minutes. If that's idle memory, then the opportunity, like there is 32% uh, memory is idle across uh, these uh, Google data centers. However, if we set this thing, there is also like a, a 14, 13, 14% default rate if we decide to go with this definition. So, uh, 14% of this uh, idle memory is becoming uh, non-idle or hot memory per minute. So we have to find us a, uh, a spot where we are comfortable with the amount of uh, the opportunity versus the cost. All right. So uh, before uh, going to the like why what we did. Uh, the question is why what the current Linux kernel provides? Why not use uh, whatever there is already there? So Linux kernel has a, a, a case swap, a background reclaimer, which we did not use. Uh, the reason is like, f first thing is like, uh, the whole memory reclaim in the Linux kernel is full of tons of heuristics, and like complicated heuristics and stuff. And, the case of these is uh, based on more of a watermarks. Like if the free memory goes below some watermark, then start reclaiming and reclaim till you hit the higher watermark. While here we don't really care about the watermarks. We just, even if the free memory is more than 50%, but you have a lot of idle memory there for, uh, for a couple of minutes, just reclaim those. And the Linux kernel does provide a mechanism. Uh, now, you, how to find uh, idle memory or the hot memory. So Linux kernel does have the page idle tracking, which has a very high CPU overhead and the memory overhead. So at the, uh, this is the, like the pseudocode, what it looks like uh, is basically you go through the whole memory, read the flags, see if it is something you are interested in, then get the C group of, the, of that page, and then get the access bits of that page if this was access in the, in the last time you uh, checked this page. So if it is accessed, it means it was in that cycle, it was accessed, so it is a hot. Otherwise, it's an idle page. So we have uh, implemented KSTLD, which is kind of like similar approach but it's an in-kernel uh, uh, page idle tracking. It doesn't have memory overhead because uh, all this information are stored in struct page, or page flags more specifically, but it has a similar CPU overhead. You still have to go through all the PFNs and uh, basically find their, uh, are these pages were accessed or not. 
And once you have this information, you can track the age of each uh, page. And based on the threshold, so we have a separate thread which also does like scanning and it sees if the page is colder or idle, uh, uh, more idle than some threshold, just reclaim it. So case tld maintains the edge, while k claim d reclaims them based on some threshold. And then we have per mcg per job knobs where you can specify uh, what that threshold should be for this job. And also it provides you some histograms, the default histograms, things like that. Now, it still have uh, the same CPU overhead. So what this thing is, it's a, so this overhead correspond is linear to the size of the, of the, of the RAM. As you increase the size, it will also increase because you, you are scanning the whole PFM. And if you increase the frequency of your scan, uh, again, you're spending more CPU time. And on further inspection, what we found out that uh, the main cost of this scanning is basically the R map. So in Linux, from uh, like when you have a page, you can uh, backtrack, you can like reverse uh, uh, walk, and map walk to see where this page is mapped, in which address spaces this page is mapped. Uh, so you go to the all the page tables this page is mapped, and those page tables will have the access bit. Okay, this page through this mapping was accessed. So you transfer all those accesses to the page uh, referenced bit or page idle bit uh, of this uh, page. So this reverse map work was the like 50% uh, time spent on this thing. So to like we then implemented op optimization instead of like going through the page and going rever uh, back uh, to all the mapping where this uh, page was mapped. Why not, whenever someone creates the mapping, uh, have a separate data structure to link all the PMD. Uh, so PMD is the like a t page table, uh, like second level page table uh, entry. So there we basically linked all the PMDs ever created on the system. So now, uh, instead of from the page going to the back to the PMDs, we go from the PMDs to the pages. So after uh, each cycle, traverse the PMDs and transfer the access bits from here to their corresponding pages. And uh, so you don't have to traverse all the PFNs, uh, all the pages and uh, reverse track. Instead here, it will be, if you have not too many pages mapped, then you will be traversing very less pages. So this is one optimization, but still you have to uh, maintain the age. So those pages which are not accessed, you have to increment their age. So there is still uh, this cost. We are like, there is follower work to also remove this thing, but at the moment, this is the, what we are doing. So the aging, there's no, uh, like a, to find the excess uh, bits, you don't have to uh, traverse the PFNs, but for, uh, for aging, we still need to. And by using this thing, uh, this optimization, we were able to reduce the cost by 3.5x, the CPU cost. And similarly, like the, the other thread, the reclaimer, it doesn't really need to uh, scan the PFN as well. Uh, so this threshold checking, the first uh, thread can see, oh, this was above some threshold, it can queue this page for the other thread to reclaim. So we removed uh, the scanning from the reclaim D, and it's also like CPU reduced by 1.5x. So uh, I presented this work uh, at the LSFM, uh, the, the Memory Management uh, Maintainers uh, Conference. So their uh, main concern was why we are bypassing the LR users. So here what, uh, what I'm doing is, uh, like what we are doing is, so Linux maintains the inactive LRU, active LRU. So we are kind of bypassing all those uh, LRUs and reclaiming directly those pages, maintaining their edges and uh, reclaiming those. So first, con uh, like there were why you're uh, bypassing uh, the existing infrastructure. 
and the second was the uh, oh, CPU cost is still high. And actually, uh, like there, uh, there is it, there is further we, uh, work need to do, which we are doing to further reduce the cost. So here the potential way forward uh, what I see and I think uh, we are currently doing it's basically uh, you saw from the Chrome OS team he's doing is to decouple the aging from the memory pressure. So Linux kernel also does the aging. It's inactive LRU, active LRU is uh, kind of like represents the ages of the page. Uh, so all the pages which are uh, like access more are in the active LRU, which are accessed just once are in the inactive. And uh, it sorts the pages based on the memory pressure. So what I think we have to do is to decouple the aging from the memory pressure. Don't wait for the memory pressure to sort the LRUs. And, and once you have uh, like decouple the aging, proactively age and use the age to sort the LRUs. So even if there is a global pressure, uh, memory claim goes, uh, comes, uh, directory claim, uh, it will, its LRU will be more up to date. And the second is like a, a more of a, instead of fixed kernel uh, triggering the aging or the reclaiming after recycle, we can uh, provide a tunable to the users who are like want to, how much CPU they can spend, for example. Uh, for, for the data centers, uh, like uh, doing every two minutes, it's not that much CPU cost, but maybe for the uh, something in between the mobile devices and the data centers, the laptops, the Chrome OS, there uh, it can be like it can be configured uh, uh, by the users or the admins to instead of like every two minutes, maybe the uh, like reduce the, uh, the 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 frequency, or we uh, do uh, like start aging when the memory free memory is half, uh, below half or something. So give the user more control how they want to, how much CPU they want to spend here. So this is still work going on. Right. So now to conclude and the discussion point. So first thing, whenever uh, like, uh, like one major uh, conclusion and the point I want to make is the if you are going uh, to increase the memory utilization, you want to reduce the memory cost of your systems and uh, increase the, CP, uh, the memory utilization, try like avoid direct reclaim at all, at all cost. Because when you are in the direct reclaim, there are a lot of different like heuristics there which can go wrong in a lot of different ways. Recently, we have an issue where in the direct reclaim, when the system uh, went to the uh, like memory pressure, and then there was a burst of network traffic, and what happened was one CPU, uh, which has the swapper lock, was starved by the interrupts, and the other CPU cannot swap, cannot reclaim, because this CPU has the lock, while it was being starved by the interrupts. So there are, like uh, I said, in the memory claim, there are a lot of heuristics and there are a lot of different uh, like subsystems involved there. Of course, there are LRUs, user pages, uh, and uh, of disk pages, and then there are shrinkers, uh, kernel memory shrinkers. And there are file systems like XFS, kind of like in the shrinker, it synchronously uh, dump the pages like uh, uh, like block and dump the pages to the disk which basically it, it is blocking all the reclaimers which are which want to allocate memory for a long time so when you go in the direct claim there is no guarantee of uh, like mem like isolation and if you are running uh, multiple workloads going the direct claim will like destroy the iso performance isolation And on uh, Android side, more specifically on process M device uh, implementation side, 
we have a couple of uh, still open uh, uh, questions. Uh, one of them is, uh, do we need to, uh, uh, to vectorize basically the process M advice? So when you uh, issue the, uh, M, uh, such M advice, um, do we need ability to specify multiple VMAs at once, or we are okay with kind of calling, in, uh, calling this, this Cisco multiple times with for each VMA, which uh, depending on number of VMAs you are operating on might be costly just because Cisco's are costly by themselves. And the second and more important question is that there is a slight race over there um, to reclaim, let's say, let's say we want to reclaim one of the VMAs over different process, we need to read its M maps, uh, the PROC maps, and then uh, call the process M advice with the VMA that we found out that we want to reclaim. So there is a race because uh, between reading the maps and uh, calling process M advice, the VMAs might change. So you might end up hinting that some VMA is not needed, but by that, that time that VMA might be a different VMA. So um, two options that we see is one, because those non uh, hints are non-destructive, if we make a mistake, the worst that can happen, we will have to page in some of the memory back. So it's non-destructive. The second option is to come up with a di uh, additional uh, syscall, which would basically take a snapshot, a snapshot ID of the uh, other processes uh, memory. So basically, let's say we associate a counter you know, with the MM of that process, and every time we call this function, uh, uh, it, it will return as uh, that counter, but if MM changes, let's say VMA uh, mapping changes there, then that counter incre increments. And we provide that snapshot ID with the process M advice, and if between those two uh, events, uh, the counter changed, then the process M device basically returns like, you know, the, the information you provide is stale. Your um, snapshot ID or cookie is stale, so you need to redo the same thing. That would be, um, basically we will be de detecting changes between those two events when we read the VMA map and when we send the process M device call um, to hint the kernel about some of the VMAs. Uh, those are the two open questions, and um, uh, we would love some input on this. If somebody is interested, um, we're open for to discuss uh, those two questions. Um, overall, uh, uh, we are leaning towards using just single VMA for the first, uh, for the uh, process and advice parameters question, because um, it's, uh, with, with the vectorized parameters, uh, there is a question of how do we handle uh, errors. So let's say we, we are hinting about five different VMAs, and on the second one, uh, we encountered some error. Um, what do we do with the previous one? Do we roll back what we did? Um, what do we do with the rest of the VMAs? So it's kind of a difficult question to, uh, to answer because in some cases we want one way, in the other case, we want another way. So um, just a single VMA uh, would be uh, much easier to handle and simple to implement in the kernel. And um, from kernel maintainers, we also got this question, why process M advice should be fast? Like um, syscalls usually are not, are not expected to be fast. So why do we, do we need a vectorized version uh, we understand that you might need to call it multiple times, but it's a syscall. That's what you, you have to expect. And on the second question, we're still debating whether we want to go with a uh, complicated snapshot ID approach or just say, you know, we allow, we allow errors. Like if we hint it and VMA is changed under us, it's non-destructive hint. And we, uh, we will have to basically limit process M advice to work with only non-destructive hints in that case. So for example, M advice uh, free would not work with this function because it is destructive. Yeah, I have asked a question, good. Um, so the argument that syscalls are slow and should be slow is a bullshit argument. Um, 
the Linux kernel in particular has gone to great lengths, for example, pull and select and all sorts of networking things, contortions, to get exactly the right syscall to make it perform well. And you should do the same here. Because if you're going to be calling it for 512 gigabyte repeatedly running through um, you know, several million VMAs, you're not going to want to do a syscall for each one of them. So I don't buy that argument at all. The usage for Chrome OS and for Android, where we have uh, 16 gigabytes or less of memory typically, is going to be very different than from the data center where you have 512 gigabytes. So the need is going to be different. So maybe you can have both, right? Or figure out a way to um, make it be called in a way that is efficient because on the Android and Chrome OS side, we, we care about the power use, not as much mm -hmm. as the syscall time. So if the CPU is in a low power state and it's running slow and it's not very expensive to do, then we don't really care how long it takes. We just care that it gets done. But in the data center, you might care a lot more about how long it takes because you want to get done and then you can iterate later again. So it, it's okay. very different requirements. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's, for us, it wouldn't be a problem, but we know that we are designing not just for Android. We, yeah. we are designing for, my, if, if we want to, uh, this to go upstream, we have to think about many sure. more use cases. So yep. that's why we're opening this for discussion. I, th I think for Android and Chrome OS, it, uh, using the, what the data center wants is, is fine. I don't see a, a conflict there at all. Okay. I'm just pointing out that the, the base level is going to be different. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, here we're using like ZRAM and ZSwap in two cases. What are the main differences why we don't use the same thing in both places? Is there a reason to prefer one for one particular device? Uh, for uh, like uh, we started using Z swap, uh, I think a couple of years back, uh, four, five years back, and uh, uh, one uh, difference which I know uh, is the so Z swap is the front front swap device where a page can be rejected, and uh, there is a like in terms of like uh, implementation, it's easier. We don't want to swap out the incompressible pages because it will even increase like reduce, uh, increase the fragmentation and uh, reduce the memory utilization even. And uh, I, I think for, for the Android uh, reason for the ZRAM is mainly the maintainer. And, yeah, uh, and it's, it's just historical, yeah. basically. N not particular any like technical reason. But do they do anything differently in terms of like, if you switch one to another, it will all be same? It should be, uh, there is one difference, uh, but I think it can be uh, fixed. I had another question, like when there's a memory pressure, do Android go into ZRAM or they don't do anything in a memory pressure situation? It's only for proactive stuff. Uh, when there's a memory pressure, ZRAM is basically our swap. So anonymous, um, dirty anonymous pages will be swapped out into ZRAM. Um, anything else? Well, proactive reclaim also uses basically when we hint uh, that some memory is not needed. P basically, M advice page out mostly used for um, swapping anonymous pages. So that's when ZRAM uh, comes to life, basically. Um, and that's that's the main usage for uh, M advice page out right now. We use we don't use that for file back pages for the reasons I outlined that. It's just too costly. If we make a mistake and we page out uh, file back pages, then bringing them back is much more costly than just uh, decompressing them from ZRAM. So um, when you're looking at proctored maps and then figuring out what process I'm advised to invoke, what, what is your criteria there? Is it just like you're looking for anonymous VMAs? Oh, in our case, uh, so we know that um, this process was is in background. It has been in background, and it's not likely to be used. So basically, we we scan for anonymous VMAs, and we we uh, give the page out hint. And for file back uh, VMAs, we just gives uh, gives a uh, called um, M advice called uh, so that they are basically moved into the inactive LRU and reclaimed uh, earlier if needed. Okay, so we don't we don't force the uh, just to be clear the M advice call does not force those pages out. It just uh, moves them into inactive LRU so that they can be reclaimed easier. So do you not have to worry about 
Uh, does that only do it if that's the only mapping to them for cold? Or? Yes, uh, it does that it on, only if the page is private. Any more questions? Um, thank you, uh, Xavier. Thank you.